Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, he won the poll, so he comes up first. I'm actually absolutely fascinated that Regil is the one you all wanted to see a build from the most. Honestly, I had already thought about doing a build, but decided against it because I thought you all would look at it as a cop-out. I think he's actually pretty easy to build. And I thought I'd get a bunch of comments saying, why did you bother doing this? You could have done Soul Sail or one of the other ones. But apparently there are a bunch of you out there who aren't sure how to put his build together. I'm absolutely happy to help. So first and foremost, let's get it out the way. Hell Knight is horrible for him. <laughs> it, it really is. In my opinion, I think Hell Knight gets a bad rap um, as far as a class. I think it's absolutely fantastic as long as you are a strength-based warrior going down the Cornigan Smash line of feats, which Regil absolutely is not. He's a dexterity-based warrior, and he doesn't get nearly enough feats to go down the Cornigan Smash route because you need to focus on two weapon fighting. He has those gnome hooked hammers. They are treated as two weapons in the game and you need to take enough feats to get the most out of them. Consequently, the only reason we're sticking with Hell Knight is for role playing purposes. Obviously going outside of Hell Knight for a character like Regal just, just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't feel right. So we are going to um, max out Hell Knight all the way to level 10, but it's just not that great for him. <laughs> There's nothing all that great in Hell Knight for him. But honestly, he's so amazing on his own, it doesn't matter that much. Let's look at his starting build. So he is going to start with the feats two weapon fighting, weapon finesse, and fighter's finesse. And that's actually great for him. Obviously, again, we need to go down the entire uh, list of two weapon fighting feats. Weapon finesse is going to ensure that your dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier is used for attack rolls. Very important for him again. And then fighters finesse, make sure that the weapon finesse feats uh, applies to all melee weapons that belong to a, the associated fighter weapon group, which I assume allows weapon finesse to actually apply to our gnome hooked hammers. Uh, he has the background of Chalexian Diabolus, which gives him a plus four dodge bonus to AC against devils. Trash, <laughs> in my personal opinion, but it is what it is. And then he also has the God Claw uh, Hell Knight Order, which actually is going to give him the ability to use a morale bonus to AC attack and damage rolls for one minute. This is kind of trash if you have somebody in the party who can cast heroism and greater heroism. It basically dwarfs what the Order of the Gall Claw can do, but he has it, so it's worth mentioning. He also, as a Hell Knight, gets Smite Chaos. Now, keep in mind, what Sela gets is Smite Evil, and that's significantly better, because while you do face a lot of chaotic enemies, almost all the chaotic enemies you face are also evil, while all the evil enemies you face are not chaotic. So Smite Evil has a much greater application in the game, um, but he has Smite Chaos and he can use it when he sees fit. Also, he doesn't have anything that allows his bonuses to apply to the entire team the way Sela does. So just in general, this isn't as good, but it gives a nice little boost for Rezo when you need it. Now, in the Armager line, he has already taken Weapon fo Focus Gnome Hooked Hammer and Weapon Specialization Gnome Hooked Hammer. Both of these are awesome for him. And he's got one level in armor training. So what armor training does, it reduces the armor check penalty by one for any armor he's wearing. And then it increases the maximum dexterity bonus allowed by the armor by one. And he's gonna get more of those armor training bonuses as time goes on. You're also gonna get the same thing as a Hell Knight. And this is actually great for Regal because of course he's going to be increasing dexterity as he levels up. So the more of his dexterity bonus that can count towards his AC, the better. He's still not going to be as sturdy as Sela. 
Um, you are going to be able to increase your saves in certain areas as a Hell Knight, and we'll get into that later. And then of course he has a dexterity bonus to armor, but there's nothing that beats invulnerability. And as a paladin, Sela, it just becomes flat out invulnerable to certain things that enemies will try to do. So he's not gonna be tanky in that way. He does require more micromanagement, but as you'll see, he can pump out significantly more damage than Sela can, and that makes him a great boon to your team. Now, again, like I said, Hell Knight, not great for him. So what I personally recommend is that you start with Armager. Yes, we are going to max out Hell Knight all the way to level 10, but he gets significantly more out of being an Armager than he does out of being a Hell Knight. So I recommend you start out and take that to 10 first, then we'll go ahead and flip over to Hell Knight. Let's get started. So for your skill points, he starts out with ranks in Knowledge Arcana, Religion, and Persuasion. I think it's trash to build him up in any of these, all right? He, he doesn't have a great wisdom score. And honestly, I, I don't even feel like from a role-playing standpoint, I don't consider him like a crazy wise person. So I wouldn't build him up in that. Knowledge Arcana is um, role-playing consistent. And he does start out with a nice score in it. But honestly, the other characters you get, like Arushale, Ember, Nameo, et cetera, et cetera, much better for this. So I personally don't build him up in that. And then again, in Persuasion, he's not building up strength. He's not building up charisma. He's not going down that corner and smash line of feats. So I would say Persuasion isn't really his strong suit anyway. And honestly, again, from a role-playing perspective, I don't consider him to be a particular priest particularly persuasive character. He's all, a, he kind of brute strengths his way into making people do whatever it is he wants to do. It's not about, oh, I think you're so persuasive in your argument. So I personally prefer to build him up in perception. I think that absolutely fits with his character. And then once you've gotten to the point that you're only increasing perception by one each level up, you have one more point to play with if you're, uh, building up ranks in Hell Knight, and then there'll be two additional points if you're building up an Armager. I stick it in Lord Nature uh, because then it makes it harder for him to get fatigued and tired, which I think is absolutely in line with his character, but you could do with the other skill point, whatever you like. Now, for his first feat, I actually prefer, in fact, I think a lot of you know where I'm going to go with this. I like going with outflank. Of course, if you have a melee character, range character, basically any character dealing physical attacks, I absolutely believe they should have outflank on them. It's going to uh, increase your flanking bonus on attack rolls to plus four. And whenever you score a critical hit against the flank creature, it provokes an attack of opportunity from your ally. We're absolutely going to be building him up to be able to do critical hits. So this is going to help the entire team. Part of the reason we like starting with Armager first is because you're going to get more feats. So as opposed to every other level getting a feat, we're getting two feats here. And then I think at level um, level nine, we're going to get another two feats, giving him a significant leg up in all of the feats that he needs. So we got Outflank already, and now we're going to pick up Improved to Weapon Fighting, which is going to give him an additional attack at a negative five penalty which is negligible considering how many additions to attack you should be picking up. Level eight, Armager is gonna allow you to increase your ability points. Definitely put that into Dexterity and continue to pump Dexterity during your level ups. For your level nine feat, get Greater Weapon Focus, Gnome Hooked Hammer. And then for the bonus combat feat, get Improved Critical, Gnome Hooked Hammer. For weapon training, you've already got um, weapon training for double weapons, which applies to the Gnome Hooked Hammer. So it doesn't really matter what you get here. Personally, I go with trained initiative. I like giving my tank additional initiative to make sure that they're running out there and getting things started as soon as possible. And then it's also going to allow you another dip into weapon training double weapons for a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls. And then for your level and then for your level 11 feet, you could go ahead and take greater weapon fighting, greater two weapon fighting. But honestly, you take a negative 10 penalty on that attack, it's not all that great. So while I do take it because why leave an attack on the table? I'm never in a rush to take it. So frankly, I go ahead and scroll down, go ahead and focus on get critical focus so that we can do as many critical attacks as possible. 
All right, now we've got Armager as high as we can actually take it. So we'll go ahead and go to Hell Knight now. And at level 13, I go ahead and grab Combat Reflexes. Now, as a Hell Knight, you're going to get bonuses on saves against effects of a certain type, whether it be Charm, Compulsion, or Fear. In my personal opinion, late game, Charm and Compulsion become a much bigger deal than Fear, especially if you have someone like Seal on the team. So that's what I focus on. But you have to look at your team and how your saves are built and make a decision for yourself about which one of these is most important. But again, I personally focus on Charm, then Compulsion, then Fear. Now you also get access to a list of disciplines. Again, I'm be honest, all these are trash for Regil. Um, Pentamic Faith, a lot of people talk about it. You get to add a domain for your Hell Knight. You do not get access to domo domain spells with Regil. All right, so when you see these domain spells listed here, he doesn't get access to be able to cast any of these. So honestly, it's not all that great for him. If you were going to choose something, the two options that I would probably go with is either Knowledge Domain, which would give you access to Teaching Moment, which allows you as a swift action to affect all of your team. And then for the next minute, they can choose to roll twice and take the better result before attempting an attack roll, ability check, skill check, or saving throw. Uh, that's obviously really, really nice to be able to do. And then there's also the travel domain, which is going to allow him to be able to teleport up to 10 feet per level in the class that gave him access to that domain as a move action, making it very, very easy to plop him exactly where you want him to be. Again, he's going to be getting eight attacks per, per turn. So it's really useful to be able to put him all the way in the back line where those spell casters and those nasty archers are and have them just take them out right at the very beginning of the fight and then move on to the more difficult enemies. So both of these are worthy choices, but again, he's not getting access to any of the actual spells. Both of these are things you can only use a certain amount of times per day. So you can kind of make the decision of uh, what you prefer. Me personally, I feel like knowledge domain is much more role-playing accurate than uh, travel domain. And so I personally go with that. Uh, you can do what you want. One note, they do have this tracker discipline here, which allows him to summon a wolf for one hour until ninth hell night level, at which point he'd be able to summon a hellhound. This sounds absolutely fantastic. In practice, it's garbage. It's complete garbage. The Hellhound does very, very little damage and it is killed very easily, even on normal difficulty. So this is absolutely a trap option. It does nothing for him. The rest of them, they're okay when they actually work, but rarely do they work. He's not built properly to be able to take advantage of a lot of these other things. So you could choose whatever's interesting for you, but honestly, I don't feel like anything that's in this list really, really helps his build. Onslaught gives you a plus four bonus to his strength for one round uh, as a free action. That is useful to him uh, probably, you know, for the first maybe half of the game. And then once you've gotten to the point that all of his attacks and damage are using dexterity, this is useless to him as well. So again, obviously it's just nothing all that great for his particular build in this list. At level 15, take Piranha Strike. At level 17, get Double Slice. And then finally at level 19, I go ahead and grab Greater Two Weapon Fighting. You could, if you wanted to, try to switch out. If the critical feats like Blinding Critical or Tiring Critical are really, really important to you, you could switch out one of these last three feats for it. So I wouldn't take out critical focus or greater weapon focus or any of those. But if for whatever reason, you're not all that hot about combat reflexes or piranha strike or double slice, you could take it out for one of these feats. But in my personal opinion, these feats are more important to you and better for you than something that you can only trigger when you do a critical hit and you can't really control when you're doing a critical hit. He does crit regularly, but still, to me, it's not worth it. At mythic level one, I get ever ready. 
Mythic level two, I get two weapon fighting mythic, which is gonna reduce your attack penalties by two. And mythic level three, I get thundering blows. He's gonna be doing a lot of attacks and they're gonna be taking heavy penalties. So he'll be missing all the time. So you should be triggering this all the time and doing some really nice damage. Mythic level four, get improved critical, gnome hooked hammer. Mythic level five, leading strike. Mythic level six, get weapon finesse mythic. So it's gonna allow you to use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier on your damage rolls. It's also gonna mean when we take double slice, that is going to use our full dexterity modifier on our offhand weapon instead of our full strength modifier. Mythic level seven, take last stand. At mythic level eight, I take weapon focus, gnome hooked hammer. Because he gets weapon focus and greater weapon focus, that means that he will get a plus two to attack from this feat as opposed to the usual plus one that makes me ignore it. There is a case for going ahead and taking flawless, flawless attacks instead, since again, he's gonna be hitting eight times. This is going to do a lot to reduce those penalties that he's taking, but I, I prefer to just make sure that that first strike actually hits. So for me, I go ahead and just take weapon focus. And then at level nine, I would take Unrelenting Assault. And then for your level 10 Mythic option, I will go ahead and take Flawless Attacks. Okay, so now we're in the middle of a fight. I pumped this up to Unfair, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, we have some of the standard buffs that you would definitely wanna make sure you put on him. So of course you want Magical Vestment Armor. Until he gets a plus five Gnome Hooked Hammer, you wanna make sure you put magic weapon primary and secondary on him, because remember the game treats it as two separate weapons, even though he's holding one piece. So both of these will count to be able to increase his damage output until again, you have a plus five weapon, uh, Crusader's Edge, and then a bunch of defensive buffs. So Death Ward, Stone Skin, uh, Shield, Shield of Faith, Protection from Arrows. Most of this is because I, I have an angel, so it, makes it easy to be able to cast this and all the elemental buffs, elemental protection buffs on him. Uh, Mind blank, uh, I probably would usually put on Holy Aura uh, from your cleric. And then I do put on Legendary Proportions. He's not gonna get as much out of it as a strength-based warrior would um, because the plus six size bonus does not apply to dexterity but it is going to allow his melee weapons to deal more damage and it's gonna make it harder for enemies to run past him. So he should get more attacks of opportunity. So it's to me, it's worth it to just go ahead and do this for him, even though reducing his size would actually increase um, how, how easy it is for him to attack. And then we put haste on him, of course, to give him another attack that he can use. Okay. Now he's going to get eight attacks against this particular creature. Let's see how it goes. Oh, um, I did not use him at all for this run, so I have very little gear for him. I think this Gnome Hooked Hammer is only a plus three. I had some plus five armor laying around, and I had a plus six um, natural armor amulet laying around, so I threw that on him. Uh, he's got this plus six um, dexterity belt and plus five cloak of resistance. So just regular usual stuff that uh, we would be able to place on him. And then the mask gives him a significant boost on his um, on his save. So these saves are massive because the mask is giving him a plus 20 insight bonus on these saves. In addition to what he gets from being a hell knight. All right, so attack it eight times. Let's see what happens. Oh, and of course he's missing a bunch because we're on uh, unfair and I kept forgot to turn off Piranha Strike. Piranha Strike I think is reducing his attack by six. Yeah, it's reducing him by six. There's no way he could take that right now. All right, back to his turn again. They try to do a bunch of attacks with him, but he's pretty sturdy against these guys. So it wasn't a big deal. Let's see about hitting him eight times now. 
There we go. And there we go. Hitting him much more consistently. And he's dealing 43, 25, 28. So bug bites, unless he's able to do a critical hit. But again, because he's hitting them eight freaking times, he's usually going to kill anything he's in front of, whether he's able to do a critical hit or not. All right, and we're back again. They did a bunch of attacks against him that missed. We'll go ahead and nope, we're not able to charge either one of them. So we'll move forward. Not bad, did a little bit of damage there. Okay, and now he's going to get seven attacks because we we lost haste, so he lost one of the his attacks. See how it goes. And obviously we were able to do quite a bit of damage to her, all cumulative together, ending with her eventually dying. Okay, and again, we've got seven attacks to work with. And there we go. Again, bug bites, 30 here, 20 here, 30 there. But when you're able to do it seven or eight times, even on unfair difficulty, it's more than enough to annihilate anything that you're in front of. And again, that's with a, a layout where we really haven't optimized all of his gear. This is just what I had laying around. So if I was playing with him all the way through, by now I would certainly have a plus five gnome hooked hammer. I would have his boots, his gloves, all that stuff would be filled out with things that would benefit someone using two weapons. Um, I just so happen to have an archery belt um, that was nice for him, but that might be an even better belt that's good for someone who's using double weapons. So this is not optimized at all again, but still, obviously, even on unfair difficulty, he can pump out a massive amount of damage as long as you put the buffs on him that allow him to stay upright and ensure that that damage can keep getting pumped out. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments if there was anything that you would do differently. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.